What is up, witches and wizards, muggles and nomads? I am Animagus, and today I want to talk to you about fortress battles and foe statistics inside those fortress battles. Now, I know that that doesn't sound super sexy, and it maybe it isn't the most appealing thing sounding to you, but I promise it will bring some value to your gameplay because it will break down exactly what you can and can't do inside fortresses, particularly as an or, but definitely with an or on your team if you are a magizoologist or if you are a professor. So I want to take the time to break these things down because they are very important and they are definitely some statistics that you need to know about when you go into fortresses the next time in wizards unite of course before we get started i want to give a big shout out to orange wizard for providing us with this graphic uh of course i have looked at other graphs i've looked at other images i've looked at spreadsheets and people all over the community have provided us with some really awesome tools to look at this and to dig into this um but none have been quite so visually pleasing as the graphic that orange wizards had made so make sure you go check out the instagram link down below in the description and uh, follow them over there so before uh, we do anything else we need to go ahead and start talking about this graphic and what it means for us as players now when you are going into a fortress and you can see some fortress gameplay here on the screen there are going to be a few different types of things that you're going to look at like for example when you cast a spell like a charm or a hex on a foe in a fortress there will be some different types of things that pop up some different symbols uh, one of them will be a wizard holding a shield one could be a broken shield one could be a looking like you know they're dodging over your spell as you can see in the image that i captured on my gameplay earlier today um, and all of those things represent different facets of the foe's abilities whether that is defense or defense breach or dodge uh, proficiency power and deficiency defense so each one of those categories um, essentially is going to give your foe a percentage which will then combine to make their total um, effectiveness if you will so I'm going to kind of talk to you all about what your effectiveness can be what your potential can be inside of fortresses and all of that good stuff so I'll see I'll, I'll throw some some fortress uh, you know background play uh, over the top of some of this footage you'll see me throwing down some spells and things like that on um, you know some instances but that's just for b-roll but for now i want to go ahead and jump into the graphic and start explaining that for you guys i'm going to be able to draw on top of this so let's just make sure that that works yeah. all right so i'm going to basically annotate this graphic and it in no way is representative of orange wizard's work i just need to color on top of his work for a minute to kind of drive home my points uh so what we're going to be talking about starting right now is actually the prefixes there are some prefixes in regards to uh these fortress foes and each of those has a special status effect so for example there are common formidable there are imposing dangerous and fierce that is the worst number four i've ever drawn in my life all right so each of those different prefixes which is what i will refer to them as going forward throughout the rest of the video has a specific status effect as you look across the chart you can see that common doesn't really do much for the foes so we won't be talking about that for formidable barely does anything for the most part i'm going to be talking about fierce and dangerous foes because when you're in the mid to late game fortress uh you know chambers which you should be at this point if you play in a group or if you've played solo enough in this game um then that's gonna be where the math comes in that we're gonna try to do so the first thing that i want to point out is that ours are the strongest and they're op <laughs> but um sort of i'm sort of joking but not really because the or has a confusion hex that when you take note of this confusion hex here you can actually see that it will negate and completely get rid of impair nullify erase whatever word you want to use in that segment there uh any of these first three things up here so we're looking at defense defense breach and dodge those are the first three traits that we're going to look at and if you have a maxed out confusion hex as an or you completely negate any of these bonuses because as you can see at the highest level the fierce foes will never exceed 60 percent of a boost and that's really really important to know because 60 percent is exactly how much of a negative effect the confusion hex does as you can see here 
and this number below. So just by having a max out confusion hex, you can cast a negative 60% status effect and it instantly negates the most powerful status effects that any of these creatures or foes can see in towers, which is absolutely fantastic. First and foremost, I want to talk about the defense section. We'll be starting over at the left side of this chart, as you can see my cursor. So number one is the defense section. So we're going to skip down to formidable where dark wizard and werewolf get 5%. Imposing 15 and 25% for Dark Wizard and Werewolf respectively, Dangerous 30 and 40% respectively, and Fierce 50% for the Dark Wizard and 60% for the Werewolf. So defense is a basic defense. I mean, literally when you think of it, this icon here that you can see for defense is a great representation. It literally means to be able to defend. So the Dark Wizard has 50 and the Werewolf has 60. So what you're going to want to do in order to do some quick uh, math, some mental math, you're going to take the percentage that you see there. So in our case, and as in this example, I'll use this blank space here for some math. You're going to take the 60%. Then you're going to subtract your defense breach, whichever that may be, uh, which you can actually find fairly easily. If you look uh, here, you can actually see on my screen, I've provided all three examples, the Magizoologist, the Professor, and the Aura. You can find all of those in that location. Um, and you'll be able to use all of those percentages for every single formula that I'm about to tell you, basically. So you can use any of these and whichever pertains to you, and you would subtract that from the 60. So let's say, for example, my phone isn't in here, rut row. Let's say that I only have 50% defense breach. So we would say, okay, 60 minus 50. Well, that's obviously going to be 10. So that means that because of my defense breach and because of their defense base stat, when you subtract it, you will get a remainder of 10. And with that remainder of 10, you will see that that is their actual defense percentage, which would essentially liken them to somewhere between imposing and formidable because there's a 5% and then it jumps up to 15 and 25%. So having these skills upgraded and having the defense breach skill upgraded will help you, wait for it, breach your opponent's defense. <laughs> Okay, now that I've created some space for us, I want to go ahead and move on to Defense Breach. And since we've kind of already gotten the hang of this, I'm not going to read off the percentages because you understand how this works now. So we're just going to jump down to the formula. So your defense minus this percentage is how much you actually have as your defense. It's the exact same thing that we just did for the foe that you face. Their defense breach is going to counteract your defense. So when you're calculating, you take your defense, you subtract their percentage, and that's how much defense you actually have remaining. Again, keep in mind, if you have a confusion hex that is maxed out on your team, even if you're a Magizu or a professor, and an aura has cast a confusion hex on that foe, it is nullified, zero. So they are not affecting you whatsoever, which is why when auras are around, them foes, they go down. That was the worst thing I've ever said in my life and I hate myself. Next is going to be dodge and you guessed it, you nullify that as well with the Aurors Confusion Hex. These are actually 60% here with dodge and Urklings and Pixies are the only ones that can dodge you in the game. Uh, so that's definitely going to be awesome when they can't dodge you anymore. They have a 0% chance and you're able to completely control and manipulate that gameplay as well. There's no formula here. There's nothing fancy or weird to do about it. All you have to do is just note that with that confusion hex, the dodge chance goes down drastically. So the final two are going to be proficiency power and deficiency defense that we can actually see here on the left side. And the way that they work is going to be uh, in tandem almost. So they're going to sort of counteract each other. Basically, the way that it works is your deficiency defense will be subtracted from their percentage, and then that will be the foe's actual proficiency power. So again, like I said, I'll repeat that one more time. We'll take the percentage from either of these, any of these categories here, and we'll subtract that, or we'll subtract your deficiency defense from that, and that is how proficient they are against you. So for example, me. I don't like fighting acromantulas. I absolutely despise it. 
Uh, so when an Acromantula comes to attack me, especially even though, especially because this hex, the confusion hex, doesn't affect Acromantulas or Death Eaters for that matter. Um, and I find, if I find an elite Acromantula, that's like my worst freaking nightmare. I don't like it. I don't want to. I don't want to fight werewolves either. It's just I don't want to. I don't enjoy it because that's bad for me. So their percentage is unaffected by my cast, which means I am much, much, much weaker against Acromantula. So I'll never fight an elite Acromantula because their proficiency power against me is going to destroy me. I've been slapped, I think once or twice, maybe easily to hit by a Tarantula or Acromantula. So don't get distracted because if you get distracted like me and you stare off into the distance without thinking, you're going to get slapped by an Acromantula and then you're going to be dead. And of course, last but not least, deficiency defense. It is going to just be the inverse of proficiency. You take your proficiency power and you subtract their percentage of deficiency defense, and that will be your actual proficiency power. So I think I'm I'm not quite maxed out on proficiency power, but I think mine is about 115-ish. So if I fight an elite foe here at 25%, I'm gonna take that 115 and I'm going to subtract 25, man, drawing numbers with a mouse is really insanely difficult so i take the 115 and subtract the 25 my actual proficiency power is going to be 90 which means it is not as strong as it seems it's not as strong as it looks or feels so make sure that you are aware of these numbers because guys and i know that this sounds ridiculous and i know that it sort of sounds crazy and you might not believe me but to be honest with you this could make the difference between you winning or losing a battle if you have people who aren't necessarily as experienced and people jumping in and fighting foes that they shouldn't be that they aren't proficient against that will really be a detriment to your team. So knowing these numbers and knowing these, uh, not necessarily all of these formulas or knowing how to calculate everything on the fly, but knowing just in your head, oh, that's an elite Acromantula. And guess what? I'm an or I'm not going to do well against this at all. So somebody else, please, like a Magizu, would love for them to take this instead of me. So I know that this was kind of a long guide and it was kind of... Um, technical I guess there were a lot of numbers there were a lot of thoughts that I had when I was coming up with this video I've recorded this video four times now and I haven't liked it any of those times and so hopefully this one makes the cut because I want to be able to convey to you the importance of not just knowing formulas and knowing all of these numbers but really being aware of how you affect foes when you are in a certain scenario I mean if you're playing with an aura and they have a maxed out confusion hex that's amazing. You can fight just about whatever as long as it isn't elite because uh, in those later chambers, elite foes can really pack a punch and really can hurt you if you aren't paying attention and if you're not fighting the things that you should be. Um, but if you don't have an aura, knowing these things will definitely help you going in. If you're a solo player or if you're somebody who plays with a group without an aura, um, I highly recommend starting to invest in the aura skill tree because these types of things can, like I said, and you know before can make or break you as a team and are very important to know going into fortresses you got to know your foes so you know exactly how to take them down what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are so you can know how to counteract and play against those thank you so much for watching this video i know it was sort of deep i know it was um just kind of difficult content to trudge through with me so if you made it all the way to the end thank you very much i really do appreciate it and i would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a thumbs up on the video down below it really does help the video out and make sure you click that red subscribe button and ring the notification bells in case you haven't already because it'll notify you the next time i produce a piece of wizards unite content thank you so much for watching i expect to uh, be able to release some of the brilliant event details coming up soon uh, for the second part of the circus calamitous brilliant event so i'm excited about that as well um guys stay safe during uh the calamity quarantine looking forward to you all uh hanging out with you guys hopefully this weekend we're going to be doing a live stream uh the <laughs> immunity day live stream instead of the community day live stream so thank you guys so much for hanging out i really do appreciate it love each and every one of you and i will see you in the next video until then stay safe wash your hands and peace